Good evening. We're going to do just a quick video here on subtracting fractions. I promised the kids I'd get one up, so I think we better get it in here. Before we start, um, need to review quickly uh, what it takes to show a whole number as a fraction, because if we can't show a whole number as a fraction, then subtracting mixed numbers is going to be very difficult. Remember that the denominator and the numerator represent certain parts of a group. The denominator is how many parts make up the entire group. The numerator is how many of those parts you're using. So if you think of it this way, if I cut a pie into eight pieces and I eat all eight pieces, I've eaten the whole pie, or eight out of eight pieces. So just as a quick reference here, pretty much as long as the numerator and denominator are the same, you are representing one whole object including any number over that same number. And that's important to keep in mind as we move through this tonight. Um, so, as we're subtracting fractions, the thing to keep in mind is, just like in addition, I can't compare fractions unless they have the same denominator, or we call that the like denominator. So, for example, if I have the fraction, 3 and 2 thirds minus 1 and 7 ninths, I cannot divide, or excuse me, not divide, but subtract those until I get like denominators, in this case, ninths, because 3 will go into 9. So the 1 and 7 ninths won't be changed, but the 3 and 6 ninths we will find a um, an equivalent fraction. Excuse me, get my thoughts together here tonight. So when we do uh, create that equivalent fraction for uh, the three and two thirds, you'll notice that all I get is six ninths. Well, this creates a problem. When we are subtracting fractions, especially mixed numbers, we take care of the fraction first. We can't do the whole numbers and then just finish up with the fractions. It's just like when you're working any other subtraction problem. We always start with the smallest place value and work our way up. We do the same thing with fractions and mixed num or uh, whole numbers. We start with the smallest value, and that's the fraction. So since 6 ninths minus 7 ninths I can't do because we can't subtract 7 from 6, that means I need to regroup just like I would in a normal subtraction problem. In this case, I'm going to be borrowing from the whole number to increase the value of the fraction. So if we think about that, what we're really saying is, since I can't do 6 minus 7, I need to borrow from my 3. And as you can see here, I borrowed from my 3, which makes it a 2. I'm only borrowing one whole. The nice thing is, I can write the fraction for one whole as any number I want. As long as the numerator and denominator are the same, the value is 1. So 8 eighths is 1. 7 sevenths is 1. 9 ninths is 1. So if you look here, since I needed ninths to begin with, that's what I changed everything to. I just made that one that I borrowed, the fraction 9 ninths. Now, just like in normal subtraction, if you think of a normal subtraction problem when you've borrowed, let's say I had 27 minus 9. When I borrow from the 2, I'm really borrowing from the tens place. And the way the kids were taught to subtract, they would cross out the 2, and it becomes a 1. But because it's in the tens place, what I really did was I borrowed 10 from that 20. Well, when that 10 comes over to the 1's place, it gets added to the 7 that is already there. So I don't just have 10 minus 9. I actually have 17 minus 9. Well, with the fractions, we're really talking about the same thing. I've borrowed the fraction 9 ninths, or 1 whole, but I need to add that to the fraction that already existed there. And since I already had 6 ninths, I'm going to add that 9 ninths to it, which does create a little issue. We do now have 2 whole, 2 and 15 nineteenths which I've been talking to the kids about having a good number sense, and they will probably quickly realize, oh my goodness, I have a larger numerator than a denominator, so what I really have here is an improper fraction. Well, you do, but once we do the subtraction, that will be taken care of. 
The key here is, though, we have not really changed the value of the whole fraction. By borrowing that 1 and just moving it over to the fractions place, we really didn't change the value of that original 3 and 2 thirds. It's still there. We're just representing it as 2 and 15 nineteenths. And to check that quick, 9 times 2 is 18. 18 plus 15 is 23 plus 10 is 33 ninths. 33 ninths, if we reduce it down, divided by 3 is 11 thirds. Now if we look back up at our original, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11, 11 thirds. We didn't change the value of that mixed number. We just regrouped it so that we could do the subtraction. So my new fraction mixed number is 2 and 15 ninths, minus 1 and 7 ninths. 15 minus 7 is, excuse me there, 8. The ninths, all the fractions are still broken into ninths, so that denominator does not change until we simplify. And now, because the fraction is done, I can now do the whole number. 2 minus 1 is 1. The only thing left is to see if I need to simplify, which we did cover in an earlier video. So if you're still not sure about simplifying, you'll want to go back and check that one. At the end of any problem, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, it doesn't matter. In the end, you always need to simplify. It makes the fractions much easier to understand. All right. Well, that's just a very quick look at how we subtract fractions. Uh, my goal this week is to get a few up where we can give you some sample problems to work with. So if you're still struggling, you can do some at home and give it a practice. All right. But for tonight, that should do it. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you during the week.